Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're looking at is um, major projects that have been used or that use Python, the Python programming language, as either the primary source uh, of language to do most of their daily routines or to run like their entire stack. Um, so I could list like literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of different applications or companies that use Python in one way, shape or another uh, or form. Uh, but this video is more about who uses Python extensively and, and how did Python actually get their project, you know, off the ground. Um, so a lot of people try to say that Python is not a real language. It's a dynamically interpreted language. It's not as fast as a static language like C++ or something like that. And all that is actually true in the sense that Python is not fast. However, you can develop very quickly. And when we start talking about microseconds uh, for a dynamically lang uh, compiled language uh, to a statically typed language like C++, where Python makes memory management and all that stuff, it, it, you don't have to worry about that with Python where you do with C++. So the amount of uh, development time that is decreased using something like Python uh, more than makes up for the fact that it's not as fast as something like C++ or even C Sharp or Java for that matter. And most of the times, uh, if, you, if, if, a pro if Python is being used for the project, then speed uh, is not necessarily an issue to the point of what it would be like with uh, video games and things like that. However, we we will see in this video that Python is even used for video games. So th the fact of the matter is Python is good. Um, and all those naysayers that say Python is bad, I say ha and no. And that is a um, Wreck-It Ralph reference. Um, so Python is good. It's a great language. It's not going to be the best language for everything out there. But then again, there is no one-size-fits-all perfect language for all the different projects that you want to build out there. But the fact of the matter is, uh, don't believe what you hear about you know, Python being slow and all that other stuff. Uh, Python is most certainly fast enough to get the job done for a lot of major companies, as we're going to see in this video. So, first up, Google's entire stack, when it was uh, first getting off the ground in the 90s, all the way until the early 2000s, was exclusively in Python. And we're not even talking about modern-day Python. We're talking about old-school Python. Python's been around since like 1990 and was still a relatively new language when Google decided to use it and, and the entire original Google search engine and everything else with the way that the Google company operated was completely written in Python. Once speed started becoming a major, major factor, they started rewriting a lot of those libraries in C++, but they still use Python extensively. And uh, if it wasn't for Python, we probably wouldn't have Google, so... That is definitely the largest company that has embraced um, Python. Now, one company that I should also mention that, honestly, I didn't add to this slideshow is IBM. IBM has also been a uh, contributor to the Python language and an early adopter as well, but I forgot to mention them. So next one, we have the website Discuss. At one point, Discuss was serving something like 8 billion users a month. So Discuss is a commenting forum, but the entire comment uses the Django web framework and it allows you to take a piece of JavaScript code and just plug it right into your website. So there was, at one point, it seemed like every website out there was using Discuss as a commenting platform. There's still quite a bit of sites using Discuss, but it's all written in Python and using the Python Django web framework to be specific. Next, we have Dropbox. Dropbox's entire stack was written in Python. They're actually starting to use some Go from what I understand now. Um, however, they even hired the Python creator Guido Van Rossum away from Google where he had been employed for at least five or six years before that. Um, so he now works at Dropbox full time and Dropbox was definitely using a uh, Python stack and, and still does. Quora, a popular social commenting website where it has a lot of, um, a lot of like uh, real professionals that are commenting. It's almost like a Reddit, but a little bit more professional uh, when, it, when it comes to maintaining, you know, who can comment and, and how comments are being voted up and things like that. So it's very similar to Reddit, but it's definitely a Python website. Next, we have Pinterest. And unfortunately, I don't have my Pinterest image here. That's kind of weird. Uh, but Pinterest is obviously a big website. Here's another one, reddit.com. Reddit, everybody, I'm sure, has heard of it by now. Uh, but Reddit is definitely a very popular website. Next is Mozilla. At one point, Mozilla served something like 500 million requests per day or some ridiculous number like that, or maybe that was a month. I don't remember. But all I know is that the Mozilla plugins website is actually all written in Django as well using Python. 
The next is uh, the Pi, the programming language of choice with the new Raspberry Pi, the you know computer chips that kids are embracing for electrical engineering, um, has Python built into uh, the chip and already installed, so that kids can start writing in Python uh, to integrate their Raspberry Pi into whatever it is that they're trying to make with it. Next is the website, The Onion. The Onion is a very popular website. Uh, literally, I don't have the exact figures, but we're talking about millions of users. Uh, go to the Onion. It's a news-based website, and it also uses Django. We have Instagram, another Django Python website, and Instagram definitely uses Python uh, for their their front end. YouTube is a huge user of uh, Python, so that is awesome to know as well. Python uh, now with YouTube, obviously they are owned by Google, but they are still a separate entity. Uh, at one point, YouTube was its own company, which got acquired by YouTube, or I'm sorry, Google, which I think was in 2008, but um, YouTube makes heavy use of, of Python. iRobot is, um, is using Python for actual robotics, so that's pretty sweet. Yelp, um, one of the largest websites when it comes to actually rating businesses and restaurants across the world. Uh, Yelp is completely written in Python. The original BitTorrent client was actually written in Python. So all the pirating sites out there that use things like uTorrent for pirating movies to software to whatever, the original BitTorrent was all developed in a Python technology um, and is still you know, made use of by, by Python. So Python hackers actually contributed to the uh, BitTorrent client, which we've now seen uh, be used to pirate, pirate software on an astronomical level. Python is also used for games. Um, so one game, EVE Online, is actually like their entire server system is all tied together using Python, um, which is pretty cool. This is a, a very popular online game. Python also has the Panda 3D, and it's a uh, gaming framework. So Disney used it for their Pirates of the Caribbean game, which was a massive online multiplayer game kind of sucked but um still it was very cartoony and i mean it worked good it just was you know it was a crappy game a lot of games suck but um that ne didn't really necessarily have anything to do with python however uh, i will mention that you know even though there's a couple of games that use python in one way shape or form like python is not really the type of language that you would use to make games i mean typically you're going to be more confined to like c or c plus plus because you do need that massive speed and when we start talking about you know thousands of second uh, requests per second, uh, Python is dynamically interpreted. It's not compiled like a, like a, a static language. So it th th there is a, definitely a speed factor there when it comes to whether or not you need to use whether or not you should use Python if, if speed is a major major issue. If you're doing some basic text crunching or or scraping like Google does, like scraping data from one page to the next. Python most likely fits the bill for that type of thing. Programmers can write the code very easily and quickly in Python, and the speed difference is hardly noticeable to a typical human. But once again, once you start amplifying that by thousands of requests or millions of requests a minute, you start to see where speed um, does become an issue when you compare Python to something like C++. So those are just some of the websites out there, and I just wanted to say that um, you know, those are some obviously some major brands out there that are using Python. Uh, Python is also the most taught language now in, in, uh, as an introductory programming language in IT schools around the world, which includes Carnegie Mellon, MIT, Stanford. They're all using Python. It's free. It's open source. It runs on Linux. It runs on Mac. It runs on um, Windows. And it just, it just makes it easy. So it's all user contributed. It's been around now for going on three decades. Yeah, 90. No, wait, no. Yeah, uh, so we're going on two decades, actually, but still, it's been a long time, and uh, Python's definitely not going anywhere at this point. It's in the top ten. It's firmly embedded in the top ten programming languages out there. There's a lot of jobs out there for it. Um, I didn't mention some of the data sciences divisions, but a lot of, like, bioinformatics and uh, just, you know, data sciences, machine learning, uh, big data is all intertwined with Python. So Python's actually one of the go-to languages when it comes to machine learning which is going to be a huge 
factor going into the future when it, you combine machine learning with big data um, and, and you know scripting it all together using something like Python. So anyway, guys, uh, Python is definitely a good language to learn. It's not the number one language when it comes to enterprise development, not compared to Java or C Sharp. But uh, if somebody tells you that Python is a shitty language, then they have no idea what they're talking about. Anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate your time, and thank you for watching. You have a good day. Bye.